Life is so automated that it seems almost natural to seek out convenience. Tofu is a prime example of that. It's become a largely automated process, but if you want to make it perfectly, you have to craft it. We're going to meet with a master tofu maker. Koki at Meiji Tofu strives to keep a process alive that utilizes knowledge and technique. I mean, there's no such thing as a perfect day or perfect production, you know. I think there's always something that can always be tweaked or worked on. It's, it's hard because you constantly have to keep an eye on different aspects. It took me a while. I mean, I was constantly breaking tofu. <laughs> it's because it's, it's so soft, you know. Today we're at the Meiji factory uh, and we're going to make tofu. Yes. All right, so where do we start? We start with soybeans that I soaked overnight. First thing we have to do is grind these down. So how long have you been doing this? I've been doing this for 16 years now. 16 Straight years. out of high school. Yeah, really? we, to my, uh, my dad and I, we took over the year 2000. But the business itself has been here since 79. Uh, like this machine right here, 1971. You come here at what, three in the morning? About two, 2.30 in the morning. Just you? Just me. For now, it's just a one-man operation. After high school graduation, I was trying to figure out what I want to do with my life right. and my dad just pretty much came in and said, hey, we, we bought a tofu business and I need your help. So I just took over. Now your father is a chef and he's like, this is My or... dad, uh, growing up, he was making tofu at his restaurant with his parents. Nice. So he always had like an idea. We learned it from our previous owner mm -hmm. about just the basics of it. Then you guys just had And then we just kind of scrapped the idea, just kind of took little parts of it and yeah. just, you know, threw in our own. What are we looking for right now? Getting a taste of it. Okay. I like to keep my taste doughy because it'll turn into a thicker soy milk. And with a light soy milk, you won't be able to coagulate. So what I'm doing is I'm filling up this tank with cheese. And then I'm going to cool it down and it creates a vacuum suction. So once I release this now, everything gets sucked in. So essentially, all three of these are connected. Yeah. And everything has been transferred into our steam cooker. So and then we're going to be cooking this for about a couple minutes. OK. And we're going to be running that through the press. I was actually able to get in touch with a tofu maker in Tokyo. Okay. And he invited me to work under him. Same, same equipment or completely oh, different? When I walked in, because I didn't know what to expect, but I was actually surprised to find out what we were doing is pretty much the same. Exactly the same. Except he was more of a, like a mad scientist. He pretty much taught me about numbers, you know, temperature, um, humidity, you know, how long am I soaking the beans in water? What's the temperature of the water that you're soaking in? He pretty much taught me how to perfect my craft. The soybeans that we used today from Ohio, 16 years ago, where were they from? You know what, that was one of the main things that we had to change from the previous owner. Uh -huh. Every week we were getting different soybeans from different parts of the uh, world. Yeah. So like one week we would get soybeans from Argentina. <laughs> Next week we would get soybeans from Chile. The other week we might get it from like Michigan. The Kanematsu company that we work with now, mm -hmm. it used to be uh, run by Honda Motors. Oh, that's funny. When the containers would come in from Japan filled with cars, they would ship the containers back with the soybeans in it. Really? That's so what they were doing Japan's actually buying American soybeans now? Yes, they are. They'll never tell you that, though. <laughs> <laughs> They'll never admit that. Yeah, they probably won't. They will not admit that. So after you fully cook it, you give it a little time, and you cool it down a little bit, and it actually eliminates a lot of the bubbles that are actually inside. Now, why are the bubbles bad? Because when you're coagulating, you're trying to make the smoothest tofu. All right, so now it's coming out of here. Yeah. And now what's coming out is the cooked product. And we're Correct. separating literally the curd from the soy milk. Yes. This is called okara. Okara. Okara uh, is the byproduct of tofu. And we, we can eat this? Oh, yeah, go okay. ahead. Oh, yeah. I'm going to open this valve. Okay. 
Now this is pure soy milk. This is pure soy milk. It smells amazing. And now this cheese block. I'm using two different types of grades. The one underneath is the finest. Okay. The one on top is a little rough. But what we're gonna filter out is the finer version of the okara that's inside still. Now if it gets too cold, what happens? If it gets too cold, then it won't um, coagulate. Can you restart or it's no good? Oh no, once it gets cold, it's, you're done. It. Yeah, you messed up. This is the crucial part right here, right? This is very crucial. Cool. All right, so now we're gonna take the hot soy milk and add coagulant. Correct. Now, what is that? This is deep sea water. Deep sea Japan. water from Japan. Yeah. So there's a company that just sells deep sea water. Yeah. That's so cool. And then you just go? And you just go. Oh, wow, that's you know, fast. That's me already, right? Wow. Yeah. There you go. We take fresh, hot soy milk or tofu, package them airtight, and then we instantly cool it down. This completely closes down the window of bacteria growth. It's, it's freezing in it's here. It's freezing. Can yeah. I touch it? Go ahead. Why is there nobody making tofu? Just... Yeah, you know what? I don't know. Yeah. Is it a dying art or is it just more like you know what? unexposed? Even, even in Japan, it's a dying art. Mm -hmm. um, 20 years ago, there were like 3,000 tofu shops. Right. And then 10 years ago, it was dwindled down to 1,500. Wow. And now I think they don't, may not even have 300. It's all just machines and robots. Yeah. You never dreamed of you know, being a tofu connoisseur, to a tofu maker. No. Now that you are, what draws it to you? What, what excites you about it? What is it that makes it beautiful? I think, for one, it's, it's the taste. I mean, I just love the taste. You tasted the nigari, or mm -hmm. the seawater, right. right? And how bitter it is. Yeah. But then when you taste the finishing product, it's kind of like, Oh my god. Right. You know, it's the harmony between it's soy bean sweet. and yeah. But this is pretty much the purest tofu you will ever find in the market today. We have to make it look pretty. Wow. 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 Yes. It's nice and silky, right? So good. This is what I eat every morning. Every morning, huh? Every morning. Really? Breakfast of champions. Right. And that's tofu for you. That's it? That's it. So would you ever replace all this with just brand new electronical... You just push your button. Push your button, yeah. that? No, never, man. Never. So that's no. what you love about it. You love the process. Yeah, I like to say... Sifting through it. I made it. You like, you there know. it is. If you like that episode and you want to see more of Chokening, click here. We're going to catch some cod. Big snowstorm coming, so hopefully they're going to bite. <laughs> <laughs> All clear, Steve. All right, New York City. Let's go get you some dinner.